Hello, a very good afternoon to you today. My name is Sister Temi Tayo, and I'm here once again to share the Open Heavens Daily Devotional with you. Now, the Open Heavens Daily Devotional I'm sharing is this one that is compiled by the General Vasia of the <clears throat> Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E.A. Adeboye. Now, if you're visiting my channel for the very first time, and if you know me personally, you may be asking, Sister Tayo, why are you sharing this particular daily devotional? Why not another one? Well, it's because as I began to, as I um, prepared to enter into the year 2020, the Spirit of God instructed me to begin to share this particular daily devotional on YouTube to be very specific. And I was able to start that assignment in the month of June 2020. I shared the devotional also in the month of August, October and December. And uh, in this year, 2020, I've resumed sharing in the month of March and I'm now sharing in the month of May. And by the grace of God, I will share also in the subsequent months of 2021. Now, Pastor Adeboye led me to Christ in October 1997, many years ago when I was in the University of Lagos in Nigeria in West Africa. And Pastor Adeboye's style of teaching is that he will give you a few scriptures to read. He will give you a memory verse. And when you combine those two pieces of scriptures, help you to understand the body of the text and what the Spirit of God is communicating to the body of Christ at such a time as this. Amen. Now, today is Saturday, May the 15th, and the title of today's daily devotional is Leave and Cleave. Leave and Cleave. And our scriptural reading is taken from the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 25 to 31. That's seven verses. Yes, yeah, seven verses. Ephesians 5, 25 to 31. Seven verses. And sometimes I read from the King James, sometimes I read from the New King James, but today I'm just going to read from the traditional King James. And then, of course, I'm going to explain the scripture. So let's go to the New Testament, the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 25 to 31. Amen. And we're going to be reading from the King James, from the King James, uh, the old King James. Amen. And thus goes the reading of God's word. It says, husbands, love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself for no man ever yet hated his own flesh but nourisheth and cherisheth it even as the lord the, sh the church for we are members of his body of his flesh and of his bones for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and the two shall be one flesh amen may god bless uh, the reading of his words so paul here paul is the writer of the book of ephesians he's not the author the author of the the bible is the holy spirit but paul is the writer the bible says that holy men wrote as they were moved by the spirit of god so here is paul he's saying that husbands should love their wives even as christ loves the church okay so the church is like the bride of christ so the relationship between a husband and wife is com is is um compared to the relationship between Christ and his church. And he's saying, and Paul is saying here that Jesus Christ sanctifies and cleanses the church with the washing of water by his word. He says that um, the aim of Jesus Christ is to present, you know, to make sure that the church, at the end of time, he presents the church to God the Father without spot or blemish or wrinkle. In the same way, the husband is also supposed to make sure that his wife improves, she gets better. And better that the day when he married her as time goes on she's better than what she was there you know he and then the bible also says that jesus christ you know he nourishes and cherishes cherishes the church in the same way a, a husband is expected to nourish and to cherish his church even as the lord the church you know and then the bible then says that for this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and be joined unto his wife and the two shall be one flesh joined to his wife not to his 
girlfriend amen and you know when i read this scripture in the book of genesis many years ago i always thought that is the woman who will have problem you know because she's so attached to her mother so attached to her father she may find it hard living and cleaving but that was my own thought actually god has a different view that it is the man who has problems living and cleaving so god is saying to him here that you must leave the man must leave his father and his mother and be joined unto his wife and this, the memory verse is taken from matthew 19 5 and it says for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and the twine shall be one flesh amen you must leave and cleave god is saying pastor is saying to the men today pastor says that marriage is a good thing when god is in it the bible says in proverbs 18 verse 22 that whosoever findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor of the lord it says wife not girlfriend okay all right so pastor is saying that marriage is a good thing because the bible supports marriage god supports marriage god said through his true uh, solomon that he who finds a wife finds good thing and what obtains favor from god pastor says this scripture dismisses the wrong notion that marriage is a an entanglement or a necessary evil our memory verse today reveals that the man must leave his parents and cleave to his wife however it takes love the god type of love for a man to totally leave his parents and cleave to his wife pastor says for marriage to work the man must strictly adhere to this twin command leaving his parents and cleaving to his wife this love we are talking about today is unconditional is not predicated on whether the woman is good or bad the moment you say i do you are under obligation to love your wife as yourself according to the bible reading of today which says in part that if husbands must love your wives even as christ also loved the church and gave himself for it so pastor is saying here that according to the bible the man must leave his parents and cleave to his wife and you know for him to do that it it, it, uh, it takes the the love of god in him to actually leave his parents not just his parents but his sister you know and his brothers you know and be joined to his wife and the two of them become one flesh you know and uh showing her love is not dependent on whether she's good or bad once you have said i do you are under obligation to love your wife unconditionally and you don't love her because she's a good woman you love her because you have made a choice you have said i do and you have chosen that woman and you must love her whether she's good or bad unconditional love and that's why he was saying that it takes the god kind of love you see the, the god kind of love is unconditional god loves us even though some of us have we've been bad you know so and that's the the kind of love that god that jesus christ has for the church you know we've not done everything that god wants us to do but jesus christ still so loved us you know that he still died for us unconditional love irrespective of the fact that we didn't love him he still died for us and that's how the husband must love his wife whether she's good or bad and you know some men will say oh you don't know my wife ah satire you don't know my wife you know my wife you won't be talking like that but you made a choice you married her you know right so you can't complain you made the choice now that you have said i do you are under obligation to love her unconditionally just like christ loves the church unconditionally full stop you know you've married her that's it so then pastor goes on to say in first Corinthians, well the holy spirit says in first corinthians 7 32 and 33 says but i would have you without carefulness he that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the lord how he may please the lord but he that is married careth for the things that are of the world how he may please his wife that's in first corinthians 7 32 to 33 pastor says the truth in the above passage is that a man is under obligation to cater to the joy and well-being of his wife some so-called christians are so careless about their marriage that they, ne they neglect the divine mandate of caring for the family leaving their wife and children disillusioned about the faith so in that verse in first corinthians 7 32 to 33 it says that an unmarried man he cares for the things of the lord how he may serve the lord but once you are married you know you you now have earthly responsibilities and you must care how you and you are now um you now have to also care for your wife and children your interests are divided so 
uh, the Bible is distinguishing between a man that is married and a man that is not married. When you are unmarried, you care for the things of the Lord. But once you are married, your interests become divided. It's, that's it. That's how it is. And you now have earthly responsibilities to care for your wife and your children. Pastor is saying that there are some Christians who do not do this, you know. And, um, you know, so they and they leave their wife and their children disillusioned. So maybe you're listening here and you've been playing around. You've not... Um, been taking care of your family what you're doing is that you're leaving your family disillusioned and that is the cost of some of the things that we see in society today as a man you must take care of your family you must provide for them okay you must bring up your children in the fear of god and love your wife okay a lot of the children we see running around you know using knives and um being involved in sexual promiscuity is because they didn't have their father at home so they become disillusioned pastor says to love is to care and to care encompasses the provision of basic amenities for the home the bible says in james 2 18 yea a man may say thou hast faith and i have works show me thy faith without works and i will show thee my faith by works so pastor is saying that you know um if you say you love your family you must care and provide for them okay and um you know he said there that the leaving the wife and children disillusioned about the faith so some people have grown up in christians home seen how their fathers beat their mothers or see how their father was just never there he was just so busy and what it does is that it destroys their faith in god they become disillusioned by, about the faith you know and um, um it affects their belief in the gospel of our lord jesus christ pastor says that if you are the man you must provide for your family you know, it's not just enough to say, oh, um, I'm a Christian, I have to do this. And you must provide for your family. No, your faith is not enough. You must add works to your faith. You must provide for your wife and your children, not only physically, but emotionally. Pastor says in the same way, men must show their love in practical terms to the extent that there will be no doubt that they love their wives. Note, the Bible didn't say abandon your family and friends. But you are to leave them and cleave to your wife in a lifelong union built on the sure foundation of the word of God. So, Pastor is explaining finally that when the Bible says leave and cleave, you must be you must leave your father and your mother and your friends and your sisters and everybody and be joined unto your wife. But that doesn't mean that you should forget your family and your friends and your mother and your father. But in you must be joined to your wife in a lifelong union on the sure foundation of God. And the prayer point is this, Father. Please give me the grace to love my spouse unconditionally, just as Christ loved the church. So let's pray. Father, I pray for myself and for my hearers, for the men and for the women as well, that, Lord, you will give us the grace to love our spouses unconditionally in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I ask that you bless our homes and our children in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for taking time to listen to me. I hope this was not too long. My name again is Sister Tayo. And if you're visiting my channel uh, for the very first time or you have not subscribed, please, I will encourage you to subscribe. Please tap the notification bell so that every time I upload a video, you're aware. And uh, you can drop me a comment or send me an email and I'll be very, very glad to answer. Thank you very much for taking time to listen to me. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. May the Lord bless you exceedingly. Thank you very much and God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day.